Ashes of Roses by Elaine Goodale Eastman Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett Soft on the sunset sky bright daylight closes, Leaving when light doth die pale hues that mingling lie. Ashes of Roses When love's warm sun is set, love's brightness closes, Eyes with hot tears are wet, and hearts there linger yet. Ashes of Roses End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Baby Running Barefoot by D. H. Lawrence Read for LibriVox talk by Corrie Samuel In June 2007 When the bare feet of the baby beat across the grass, the little white feet nod like white flowers in the wind. They poise and run like ripples lapping across the water, and the sight of their white play among the grass is like a little robin's song, winsome, or as two white butterflies settle in the cup of one flower for a moment, then away with a flutter of wings. I long for the baby to wander hither to me, like a wind-shadow wandering over the water, so that she can stand on my knee, with her little bare feet in my hands, cool like syringa buds, firm and silken like pink young peony flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bingen on the Rhine by Carolyn Norton Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage A soldier of the Legion lay dying in Algiers. There was a lack of woman's nursing, there was dearth of woman's tears. But a comrade stood beside him while his life-blood ebbed away, and bent with pitying glances to hear what he might say. The dying soldier faltered, and he took that comrade's hand, and he said, I never more shall see my own, my native land. Take a message and a token to some distant friends of mine, for I was born at Bingen, at Bingen on the Rhine. Tell my brothers and companions, when they meet and crowd around, to hear my mournful story in the pleasant vineyard ground, that we fought the battle bravely, and when the day was done, full many a corpse lay ghastly pale beneath the setting sun, and mid the dead and dying were some grown old in wars, the death wound on their gallant breasts the last of many scars and some were young, and suddenly beheld life's morn decline, and one had come from Bingen, fair Bingen on the Rhine. Tell my mother that her other son shall comfort her old age, for I was still a truant bird that thought his home a cage. For my father was a soldier, and even as a child my heart leapt forth to hear him tell of struggles fierce and wild. And when he died and left us to divide his scanty hoard, I let them take whatever they would, but kept my father's sword and with boyish love I hung it where the bright light used to shine, on the cottage wall at Bingen, calm Bingen on the Rhine. Tell my sister not to weep for me, and sob with drooping head, when the troops come marching home again with glad and gallant tread, but to look upon them proudly, with a calm and steadfast eye, for her brother was a soldier too, and not afraid to die. And if a comrade seek her love, I ask her in my name, to listen to him kindly without regret or shame, and to hang the old sword in its place, my father's sword and mine, for the honour of old Bingen, dear Bingen on the Rhine. There's another, not a sister. In the happy days gone by you'd have known her by the merriment that sparkled in her eye. Too innocent for coquetry, too fond for idle scorning. O oh, friend, I fear the lightest heart makes sometimes heaviest mourning. Tell her the last night of my life, for ere the moon be risen, my body will be out of pain, my soul be out of prison. I dreamed I stood with her and saw the yellow sunlight shine on the vine-clad hills of Bingen, fair Bingen on the Rhine. I saw the blue Rhine sweep along, I heard or seemed to hear the German songs we used to sing in chorus sweet and clear, and down the pleasant river and up the slanting hill the echoing chorus sounded through the evening calm and still, and her glad blue eyes were on me as we passed with friendly talk down many a path beloved of yore and well-remembered walk and her little hand lay lightly, confidingly in mine. But we'll meet no more at Bingen, loved Bingen on the Rhine. His trembling voice grew faint and hoarse, his grasp was childish weak. His eyes put on a dying look, he sighed and ceased to speak. 
His comrade bent to lift him, but the spark of life had fled. The soldier of the legion in a foreign land is dead. And the soft moon rose up slowly and calmly, she looked down, on the red sand of the battlefield, with bloody corpses strown. Yet calmly on that dreadful scene her pale light seemed to shine, as it shone on distant Bingen, fair Bingen on the Rhine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chamber Music Number Twenty, in the Dark Pine Wood, by James Joyce, read for LibriVox.org by Squid Varshalakova, found at Frisco-Squid.blogspot.com. Chamber Music Number Twenty. In the dark pine wood, I would we lay, in deep cool shadow at noon of day. How sweet to lie there! Sweet to kiss, where the great pine forest enisled is. Thy kiss descending, sweeter were, with its soft tumult of thy hair. O oh, on to the pine wood at noon of day, come with me now, sweet love, away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Four Leaf Clover by Ella Higginson. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. I know a place where the sun is like gold, and the cherry blooms burst with snow, and down underneath is the loveliest nook where the four leaf clovers grow. One leaf is for hope, and one is for faith, and one is for love, you know, and God put another in for luck. If you search, you will find where they grow. But you must have hope, and you must have faith, you must love and be strong, and so. If you work, if you wait, you will find the place where the four-leaf clovers grow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Maid by Sarah Teasdale Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I saw her in a Broadway car, the woman I might grow to be. I felt my lover look at her, and then turn, suddenly to me. Her hair was dull and drew no light, and yet its color was as mine. Her eyes were strangely like my eyes, though love had never made them shine. Her body was a thing grown thin hungry for love that never came. Her soul was frozen in the dark, unwarmed forever by love's flame. I felt my lover look at her, and then turn suddenly to me. His eyes were magic to defy the woman I shall never be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Orchard by H. D. Hilda Doolittle Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I saw the first pear as it fell, the honey-seeking, golden banded the yellow swarm was not more fleet than i spare us from loveliness and i fell prostrate crying you have flayed us with your blossoms spare us the beauty of fruit trees the honey-seeking paused not the air thundering their song and i alone was prostrate O oh, rough-hewn god of the orchard, I bring you an offering. Do you, alone, unbeautiful, son of the god, spare us from loveliness? These fallen hazelnuts, stripped late of their green sheaths, grapes, red-purple, their berries dripping with wine, pomegranates already broken, 
and shrunken figs, and quinces untouched. I bring you as offering. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poet by Ralph Waldo Emerson, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. To clothe the fiery thought in simple words succeeds, for still the craft of genius is to mask a king in weeds. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Queen Mab by Thomas Hood Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica A little fairy comes at night. Her eyes are blue, her hair is brown, With silver spots upon her wings, And from the moon she flutters down. She has a little silver wand, And when a good child goes to bed, She waves her hand from right to left, And makes a circle round its head. And then it dreams of pleasant things, of fountains filled with fairy fish, and trees that bear delicious fruit, and bow their branches at a wish, of arbors filled with dainty scents from lovely flowers that never fade, bright flies that glitter in the sun, and glowworms shining in the shade, and talking birds with gifted tongues for singing songs and telling tales, and pretty dwarfs to show the way through fairy hills and fairy dales. But when a bad child goes to bed, from left to right she weaves her rings, and then it dreams all through the night of only ugly, horrid things. Then lions come with glaring eyes, and tigers growl a dreadful noise, and ogres draw their cruel knives to shed the blood of girls and boys. Then stormy waves rush on to drown, or raging flames come scorching round, Fierce dragons hover in the air, and serpents crawl along the ground. Then wicked children wake and weep, and wish the long black gloom away. But good ones love the dark, and find the night as pleasant as the day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rainy Day by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Priscilla on June 3, 2007. The day is cold and dark and dreary. It rains and the wind is never weary. The vine still clings to the moldering wall, but at every gust the dead leaves fall, and the day is dark and dreary. My life is cold and dark and dreary. It rains and the wind is never weary. My thoughts still cling to the moldering past, but the hopes of youth fall thick in the blast, and the days are dark and dreary. Be still, sad heart, and cease repining. Behind the clouds is the sun still shining. Thy fate is the common fate of all, and to each life some rain must fall. Some days must be dark and dreary. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rights of Woman by Anna Letitia Barbold Written in response to Mary Wollstonecraft's Vindication of the Rights of Women Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Yes, injured woman, rise, assert thy right. Woman, too long degraded, scorned, oppressed, O born to rule in partial law's despite, Resume thy native empire o'er the breast, Go forth arrayed in panoply divine, That angel pureness which admits no stain. Go, bid proud man his boasted rule resign, And kiss the golden scepter of thy reign. Go, gird thyself with grace, Collect thy store of bright artillery Glancing from afar, Soft melting tones thy thundering cannons roar, Blushes and fears thy magazine of war. Thy rights are empire, urge no meaner claim, Felt 
not defined, and if debated, lost. Like sacred mysteries, which, withheld from fame, shunning discussion, are revered the most. Try all that wit and art suggest to bend of thy imperial foe the stubborn knee. Make treacherous man thy subject, not thy friend. Thou mayest command, but never canst be free. Awe the licentious, and restrain the rude. Soften the sullen, clear the cloudy brow. Be more than prince's gifts, thy favors sued. She hazards all who will the least allow. But hope not, courted idol of mankind, on this proud eminence secure to stay. Subduing and subdued, thou soon shalt find thy coldness soften, and thy pride give way. Then, then abandon each ambitious thought. Conquest or rule thy heart shall feebly move in nature's school. By her soft maxims taught that separate rights are lost in mutual love end of poem this recording is in the public domain a roman doll by agnes lee read for LibriVox.org by alan davis drake in a museum how an image of paint and wood leaped to her life with a love's control struck the chords of her motherhood passionate little mother soul fair to her sight were the stolid eyes dear to her toil the robes impearled she crooned it the ancient lullabies she gathered it close from the outer world. They watched together, as Nero's pyres fed the haze of a hundred fires. Me in her fresh young arms she bore. See, I am small, only a doll, but I keep her kiss for evermore. Long and lonely the toy has lain, one by one into time's abyss. Years have dropped as the drops of rain. Yet the cycles have left us this. Today a sister has heard you call. I saw her weep o'er the crumbling doll. She knew, she knew. You had lived and smiled. You had loved your dream, little Roman child me in her fresh young arms she bore see i am small only a doll but i keep her kiss for evermore end of poem this recording is in the public domain Seashore by Ralph Waldo Emerson Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I heard, or seemed to hear, the chiding sea say, Pilgrim, why so late and slow to come? Am I not always here, thy summer home? Is not my voice thy music, morn and eve? My breath thy healthful climate in the heats? My touch thy antidote, my bay thy bath? Was ever building like my terraces, was ever couch magnificent as mine? Lie in the warm rock ledges, and there learn a little hut suffices like a town. I make your sculptured architecture vain, vain beside mine. I drive my wedges home, 
and carve the coastline mountains into caves. Lo, here is Rome and Nineveh and Thebes, Karnak and Pyramid and giant stairs, half piled or prostrate, and my newest slab older than all thy race. Behold the sea, the opaline, the plentiful and strong, yet beautiful as is the rose in June, fresh as the trickling rainbow of July, sea full of food, the nourisher of kinds, perjure of earth and medicine of men, creating a sweet climate by my breath, washing out harms and griefs from memory, and in my mathematic ebb and flow, giving a hint of that which changes not. Rich are the sea gods. Who gives gifts but they? They grope the sea for pearls, but more than pearls. They pluck force thence and give it to the wise. For every wave is wealth to Daedalus, wealth to the cunning artist who can work this matchless strength. Where shall we find, O waves, a load your atlas shoulders cannot lift? I, with my hammer pounding evermore the rocky coast, smite Andes into dust, strewing my bed, and, in another age, rebuild a continent of better men. Then I unbar the doors. My paths lead out the exodus of nations. I dispersed men to all shores that front the hoary main. I, too, have arts and sorceries. Illusion dwells forever with the wave. I know what spells are laid. Leave me to deal with credulous and imaginative man. For, though he scoop my water in his palm, a few rods off he deems it gems and clouds. Planting strange fruits and sunshine on the shore, I make some coasts alluring, some lone isle, to distant men who must go there or die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shakespeare by Ralph Waldo Emerson Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I see all human wits are measured but a few. Unmeasured still my Shakespeare sits, lone as the blessed Jew. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. There was a child went forth by Walt Whitman, read for LibriVox.org by Corrie Samuel in June two thousand and seven. There was a child went forth every day, and the first object he looked upon, that object he became, and that object became part of him for the day, or a certain part of the day, or for many years, or stretching cycles of years. The early lilacs became part of this child, and grass, and white and red morning glories, and white and red clover, and the song of the Phoebe bird, and the third-month lambs, and the sow's pink faint litter, and the mare's foal, and the cow's calf, and the noisy brood of the barnyard, or by the mire of the pond-side, and the fish suspending themselves so curiously below there and the beautiful, curious liquid, and the water-plants, with their graceful, flat heads, all became part of him. The field-sprouts, of fourth-month and fifth-month, became part of him. Winter-grain-sprouts, and those of the light yellow corn, and the esculent roots of the garden, and the apple-trees, covered with blossoms, and the fruit afterward, and woodberries, and the commonest weeds by the road, and the old drunkard staggering home from the outhouse of the tavern, whence he had lately risen, and the schoolmistress that passed on her way to the school, and the friendly boys that passed, and the quarrelsome boys, and the tidy and fresh-cheeked girls, 
and the barefoot negro boy and girl, and all the changes of city and country wherever he went. His own parents, he that had fathered him, and she that had conceived him in her womb, and birthed him, they gave this child more of themselves than that. They gave him afterward, every day. They became part of him. The mother at home, quietly placing the dishes on the supper-table. The mother with mild words, clean her cap and gown, a wholesome odour falling off her person and clothes as she walks by. The father, strong, self-sufficient, manly, mean, angered, unjust. The blow, the quick loud word, the tight bargain, the crafty lure, the family usages, the language, the company, the furniture, the yearning and swelling heart, affection that will not be again said, the sense of what is real, the thought if, after all, it should prove unreal, the doubts of daytime, and the doubts of night-time, the curious whether and how, whether that which appears so, is so, or is it all flashes and specks? Men, women, crowding fast in the streets, if they are not flashes and specks, what are they? The streets themselves, and the facades of houses, and goods in the windows, vehicles, teams, the heavy planked wharves, the huge crossing at the ferries, the village on the highland, seen from afar at sunset, the river between, shadows, aureola and mist, the light falling on roofs and gables of white or brown, three miles off, the schooner nearby, sleepily dropping down the tide, the little boat slack-toed astern, the hurrying, tumbling waves, quick broken crests slapping, the strata of coloured clouds, the long bar of maroon tint, away solitary by itself, the spread of purity it lies motionless in, the horizon's edge, the flying sea crow, the fragrance of salt marsh and shore mud, these became part of that child who went forth every day, and who now goes will always go forth every day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To My Dear and Loving Husband by Anne Bradstreet Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife were happy in a man, Compare with me, ye women, if you can. I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold, Or all the riches that the East doth hold. My love is such that rivers cannot quench, Nor aught but love from thee give recompense. Thy love is such I can no way repay, The heavens reward thee manifold, I pray. Then, while we live, in love, let's so persevere That when we live no more, we may live ever. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tonight by Percy by Shelley. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Walker. Swiftly walk o'er the western wave, spirit of night, out of the misty eastern cave where all the long and lone daylight thou wovest dreams of joy and fear which make thee terrible and dear swift be thy flight wrap thy form in a mantle gray star and rod blind with thine hair the eyes of day kiss her until she be wearied out then wander o'er city and sea and land 
touching all with thine opiate wand. Come, long sought. When I arose and saw the dawn, I sighed for thee. When light rode high and the dew was gone, and noon lay heavy on flower and tree, and the weary day turned to his rest, lingering like an unloved guest, I sighed for thee. Thy brother death came and cried, Wouldst thou me? Thy sweet child sleep the filmy-eyed, murmured like a noontide bee, Shall I nestle near thy side? Wouldst thou me? And I replied, No, not thee. Death will come when thou art dead, soon, too soon. Sleep will come when thou art fled. Of neither would I ask the boon I ask of thee, beloved knight. Swift be thine approaching flight. Come soon, soon. End of poem. This reading is in the public domain. When That I Was and a Little Tiny Boy by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Wilcox When That I Was and a Little Tiny Boy With hey-ho, the wind and the ring, A foolish thing was but a toy, For the ring it ringeth every day. But when I came to man's estate, With hey-ho, the wind and the ring against knaves and thieves men shut their gate, for the ring it ringeth every day. But when I came at last to wife, with hey ho, the wind and the ring, by staggering could I never thrive, for the ring it ringeth every day. But when I came unto my beds, with hey ho, the wind and the ring, with toss pots still had drunken heads, for the ring it ringeth every day. A great while ago the world began, with hey-ho, the wind, and the ring. But that's all one, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter Night by Po Chi E. Read for LibriVox.org by Paul Z. Hong Kong. My house is poor, those that I love have left me. My body sick, I cannot join the feast. There is not a living soul before my eyes as I lie alone locked in my cottage room. My broken lamp burns with a feeble flame. My tattered curtains are crooked and do not meet. Check, check. On the doorstep and window sill again I hear the new snow fall. As I grow older, gradually I sleep less. I wake at midnight and sit up straight in bed. If I had not learned the art of sitting and forgetting, how could I bear this utter loneliness? Stiff and stark, my body cleaves to the earth. Unimpeded, my soul yields to change. So has it been for four hateful years, through one thousand and three hundred nights. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Word to the Wise by Caroline Dewar Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett If wisdom's height is only disenchantment, as say the cynics of a certain school, and sages grow more sad in their advancement, then folly is the wisdom of the fool. Since fools know happiness through lack of knowledge, and see things fair because they shut their eyes, then anyone can tell, who's been to college, that wisdom is the folly of the wise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.